Hi, right, this is Carl Bissonette with another episode of Tips and Tricks. We finally got another beautiful day out and we're able to get the horses out and do a little bit of playing and figure we can hopefully help with some explaining and uh, put some more parts and pieces together for you guys. Today, I have uh, this horse in a spade bit. Uh, he's straight up in the bridle and uh, I just want to spend a little bit of time talking about um, my philosophy a little bit on it and how I help these horses and when I start thinking you know it it's a good time to maybe start thinking about putting one in um, the bridle. One of the things that's really important for me before I put this horse in a bridle is they have to have leg cues. They have to have our one two three we have to be able to move the front end, the hind end, the rib cage before we can put them in the bridle. So uh, whether you do it with a snaffle, whether you do it with a bozal, get to the bozalita, the important piece is if I push my foot up here, the front end should move away. If I come to the center, the rib cage lateral should move away. And if I come to the hind end, the hind end should move away. For whatever reason, uh, a lot of people have a fear of putting a horse in a bridle. Uh, I think a big part of that is, you know, it, it's a it's a tool. Uh, if it's used properly, it can really help these horses. If it's used improperly, we can create a lot of problems for ourselves as well. Uh, that being said, spurs are, you know, just about the same thing. I've seen people ruin a horse with spurs. Uh, but if you look at the top level trainers, uh, they're going to be using spurs uh, because they can get that much more precise with their cues. And I kind of uh, view the spade bit kind of in that similar, similar sense that it allows me to get a lot more precise with my cues and help that horse out just that much more. Uh, one of the, the differences with like the Bozal. Uh, I always tell people it's an on-off, on-off, on-off as you work to the spot that you want to get to. With the bridle, you can still do that on-off kind of sort of deal. Uh, but once I get a horse to the bridle, I tend to, and this isn't always, but I tend to set my pressure. And then if that horse doesn't respond to that pressure, then I'm going to use the spur until the horse softens up to that pressure and once the horse softens up then we'll release them so whatever the maneuver may be whether it's the hind end or the front end it's that same idea i'm going to first start with my neck rein this horse should be kind of coming around with the neck he's not so now i'm just going to lightly pick up on that inside rein and i'm going to bump with the spur until he's arching his head to the inside of the circle there and I can release that rein. The whole time we're in the bridle, the whole time we're in the spade, we're looking for that perfect, correct trueness, whether it be in the, the neck rein, whether it's from the hind end, the front end, whatever it may be. Once that horse sets that head, there we go, that's good. I'm gonna encourage him with the inside spur. And I didn't even have to pick up that rein. If he does it right, we're gonna leave him alone. If he comes to the outside just a little bit there, I lightly pick it up and I'm going to bump that spur until he brings the head to the inside. Then I'm going to hold that inside pressure with my calf, expecting him to stay right there in that smaller circle. Stepping around, stepping around, stepping around. Good. Ooh. He didn't stop right away, so I'm going to give him a couple bumps. Bump, bump, bump. Remind him every single time when we stop, it better be crisp, it better be kind of thinking about pushing his hind end underneath. When I say that word, we want to see the response. If there isn't, then we're going to bump, 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 and cue the horse and let them know that they, they need to listen. Okay, very nice. Neck rein. I'm going to test it with the spur just a little bit. There we go. Okay, now that this horse is coming through to the inside, I'm going to take that spur off. I'm going to come up here. And right there, that horse tipped his nose to the outside, so I'm gonna set it to the inside. Keep my front cue, front cue, front cue, front cue, front cue. Stay in that turnaround. 
just a little bit of neck rein, just a hair off center. Oh, till that horse gets comfortable in that turnaround without any effort on that neck rein. That was very nice. We'll check this other side. Or come in here first. Okay. Check the other side. One of the big differences with the spade bits versus you know another tool is you know I really think about when I'm telling new people that are working it for the first time. One of the things that I think a lot of new people have to make an adjustment to is whatever your cue is. You have to think a lot slower on your cue. If you were to take this bridle and just go wham like that, you know, this horse is going to be reactive and, and not give you what you want. But if you give them a chance to be right, if you slow that cue down, uh, then a lot of times they can find that spot pretty good. Okay. So now we got them walked out a couple steps. We're going to hold this inside. We're going to push it to the inside there he's not breaking he's just traveling forward so i'm going to help him again i'm going to hold this pressure i'm going to bump the spur until he releases that head keeping the head to the inside he's keeping that circle he lost the circle so we pick that rein up we're going to go bump 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 with the spur until he's really soft with that rein there and release it okay so again like we did before, we're gonna come inside, make sure that head is true, good. Cue outside for their turnaround. Now he walked off, so I'm just checking him back just a little bit. There, he's finding it really nice. Pushing that head down and low. Still traveling, still traveling, still traveling, still traveling. Whoa, okay, very clean, very nice. I like all that. For my backup, I'm going to start off with my cue. My cue is kind of waving those legs a little bit. And there, he already picked up a step. I didn't even have to pick up the reins. That's what we want to see. If I wiggle those legs, it doesn't come back. So now I'm going to pick up that and just kind of lightly bump in that cadence with that footfall. Bump, bump, and stop there. Now, if I want to encourage that, responding off those legs okay i'm going to start with the legs he doesn't move back so i'm going to move him back okay now instead of getting the release on the back from the bridle we're going to keep that bridle set and we're going to quit waving keep that bridle set and then start waving again and that will help that horse build that association to when we're waving the, the legs out um, that they're going to come back that was very nice Next thing, uh, I want to start checking and seeing as we travel around here a little bit, is I want to be able to pick up that bridle and that horse should come into form. Now, again, when I'm getting a horse into a bridle, I want to have a leg cue for everything before I even make contact with the bridle. So my leg cue for this to, to bridle a horse up is to squeeze both legs in. I'm squeezing on the calf pressure and uh, looking for that horse to bridle up. Now, if he's getting a little stiff with the bridle in the same sense, I'm going to kind of bump, bump, bump with my spurs until he frames up and holds it. Then we're going to pause for a stride or two, and then we'll release him. Okay, so even at a walk, I'm going to go bull spurs in or calves. I'm going to pick this bridle straight up. Now he's elevated right there. That's not where he should go, okay? So I'm gonna bump, 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 bump with these spurs until, bump, 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 bump with those spurs until he comes into frame. And then we'll hold him there and release it. Now, a trick with that framing up on a walk, trot, okay, if a horse doesn't get it right away, we can just bump them a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left, and that can kind of help them frame up too. Okay, so we're going to try this again. So squeeze with the legs, pick the bridle up. He's not there, so I'm going to bump, bump, bump with the spur. And that head is dropping down, bump, bump, bump with the spur. Bump, 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 bump with the spur. Head 
drives down, bump, bump, bump with the spur, head drives down, bump, bump, bump with the spur. Gonna wait until he holds it. There, he held it, so we release him. When we're working these bridles, you know, I'm really, I think it's really important, you know, to start that horse off at that walk, make sure all those cues are there. And before we even move into the trot, then we move into the trot and we're going to do the same exact measure or same exact schooling. Make sure all those buttons are there. Now, this time I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'm going to pick up on the bridle get that horse soft and then i'm going to take my legs off and i'm going to expect that horse to just stop in his tracks so again we're going to bridle up legs bump 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 lift it up until he bridles up once he's holding it once he's holding it we're just going to take those legs off expect to stop wave them See if we can get a couple nice clean steps. Okay, not changing the bridle at all. Very nice. We'll let him relax. We'll let him check that out, and he's doing really good with it. Very nice. Another thing that I do with the bridle uh, is, you know, I still want to be able to flex a horse. Uh, just kind of like you, you would with a snaffle or a bozal, uh, but it's a little bit different with the bridle for me as well. Uh, and I've talked about this a little bit in some of my other videos, uh, but we'll kind of show you it again. And uh, he's kind of warmed up. I think he'll kind of give us a good example. When we're in the bridle, I want to go to a clean neck rein, and I want that horse's head to start coming this direction. There we go. Light little help. If he comes out, I just help him again. Real light pressure, comes out, help him again. Help him again. There, until he holds it, and I wanna release on the neck rein. Okay, a lot of people, they get to where, when they're flexing these horses, they're holding that neck rein the whole entire time, that direct rein, excuse me, and the horse gets dependent on that. We don't want that cue, we want the cue for that flexion to be once that outside rein touches his neck. There. So that being said, when we do those flexions, it's really important that we're direct about it. Ooh, there. Oh, just a little bit of a feel and he started coming around that direction. When I'm in this bridle, I really do try to challenge myself and I, I see how little pressure does it take to, to get that horse to accomplish that cue. And look at that. He's trying hard that way. I want just a little bit more. Okay, so I'm gonna jiggle that just a little bit more. He comes out, I catch him, jiggle it a little bit more. There, he held it really nice. We'll leave him be. We can do this uh, you know, sometimes I'll go right, left, back, and forth. Sometimes I'll work on this one side a couple of times. Keep on changing it up on how you cue your horse. Um, the, the thing that I kind of say with that is, there we go, is that helps that horse learn the cue instead of learning a pattern. Um, we don't want the horse thinking that every single time we flex three times this way, four times that way, and then we walk off. Pretty soon you do that enough times and you flex three, four times this way, three, four times that way and walk off. Horse is gonna walk off before you cue the horse to walk off. We want them listening, paying attention, and no matter which direction we go, we wanna see some try, some effort. There we go, very nice, and we'll release that. So again, when it comes to working a bridle, it's not that scary of a thing. Um, it might not be perfect the very first time for you, but again, I just I, I couple really important things there. You know, slow that cue down. 
make sure that you have the leg cues. Can you cue this hind end? Move this hind end. Okay. Can you cue the front end and move the front end? Okay. If you can't do those things, then being in the bridle might not be quite the right time yet. Okay. Same deal. Come into the center. Pick both reins up. Okay. And that horse needs to be able to come into our lateral. We have to have all those buttons before we can put a horse in a bridle. Once they're in a bridle, pretty much all that the bridle is telling them is, is more of a, a it's not 100%, but it's more of a straight forward and back kind of sort of cue. So if I cue this horse here and he walks off, I'm going to stop him, slow him down, okay, come back to that cue, and then he's like, oh yeah, that's right. That spur up there means come around, okay? The direction isn't necessarily off the rein, the direction's off the spur, okay? So if we cue the spur up here, that means turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. If we take that off, come inside, that means walk a circle, walk a circle, haven't even changed the rein. And then if I come to the center, that means side path. Haven't really changed the rein much. Okay. So that's what it takes to get a horse in the bridle. That's what it, uh, in my opinion, helps them learn how to be there. And understand when, when you transition them into the bridle, it might not be perfect. You might have to help them out. You're going to have to teach them. That's part of being a trainer is you, you show them the correct place to be. If they bring that head up, you know, just keep working it until they bring the, that head back down. And, and pretty soon they pick it up, they figure it out, they learn how to pack it. And in a lot of cases, you know, this can be a, a lot more gentle approach to it than, than what a lot of people think and realize. And that bridle will kind of soothe their mind a bit and slow his mind down a little bit. And that's what's allowing him to really think about my spur pressure and, and get that much more correct on it. Um, again, that's Carl Bissonette, Tips and Tricks. I hope that kind of helped you out a little bit and takes a little bit of that fear of, of having one in the bridle. It's, you know, it's not a big scary thing. Yes, you know, it needs to be approached correctly. But if you approach it the correct way, if you show the horse where to be, uh, you can accomplish a lot of great things with it. So again, thank you.